Now, the good news is that partial derivatives are usually all you need to get anywhere, but sometimes they can be impractical. And this is why the proper definition of a derivative matters. Here's an example. It's a little bit weird. It tends to cause a bit of confusion among students, but I think it's worth investigating deeply. Consider the following function that acts on square matrices. So let's say A is an n by n matrix, and f of A is A squared. So this function squares a matrix. Now we can think about this as a function with uh, n squared inputs and n squared outputs, but I'd rather not think about the inputs and outputs as vectors. Rather, they are matrices. And that means that I'm also going to think about the rates of change of the inputs, h, as a matrix and not as a vector. I'm going to denote that matrix by capital H instead of lowercase h with an underline. And now I want you to think about that matrix H. Now in this case, to compute the derivative, taking partial derivatives is the end of the world, right? I mean, try it in a two by two example, writing out explicit components for everything, A11, A12, oh gosh, what a mess. And now for a 10 by 10 example, forget about it. What you want to do is think in terms of the definition of a derivative and look, first order variations. So consider what happens when I um, modify an input A by a small amount. I add this matrix H to it. Then F of A plus H is F of A plus the derivative of F at A times H plus, you know, something that's quadratic in H. Again, this is in a limit as all the entries of H are going to zero. So H is a really, really tiny matrix. Now, what does that linear transformation do? What does that derivative do? Well, what we need to do is simply investigate f of a plus h. We know exactly what this is. This is a plus h quantity squared. You know what that is, right? a squared plus 2ah plus h squared. Ooh, wait a minute, be careful. Matrix multiplication is not commutative. So it's not 2ah, it's ah plus ha. Now, investigate this expansion, if you will. There is a zeroth order term in H, something that has no H's at all. It's F of A, it's A squared. There's a first order term in H. This is A times H plus H times A. That's the derivative of F at A times H. And then the leftover stuff is quadratic in H clearly. And now we say, aha, because we see what the derivative is directly. The derivative of f at a transforms h to a times h plus h times a. That's a linear transformation in h. And so if we were to substitute that into the formal definition, into that limit as h goes to zero of f of a plus h minus f of a minus the derivative of f at a times h all divided by the, the, the length of h, the norm of h, that means that all the terms are going to zero. Then what we'll get is the a squared cancels, the h squared is left over, the a h plus h a go away. We get the limit as the length of h goes to zero of h squared over the length of h. That's vanishing to quadratic order in the numerator and first order in the denominator, that's zero. So this is in fact the derivative of this unusual function. And notice, no partial derivatives, and it works in arbitrary dimensions. This is really a very powerful result that we've gotten by using the formal definition. And notice how it kind of resembles the derivative of f of x equals x squared, right? It, it's 2 times x. Uh, evaluated at a, you get 2 times a. We've got something very similar going on here. Okay, now I get it. That example can be a little confusing, but this is important. Derivatives are more than simply matrices. They are, in fact, linear transformations. Now, you can often represent them in matrix form in terms of partial derivatives. That's great. That's useful. But that's a subtle point that it's not quite the same thing as saying that the derivative is a linear transformation.